What's up? Welcome back. In the last episode, we built out a commenting system for our blog application. And at the end, we left it with a, a little bit of a cliffhanger here for um, a couple different performance issues that we have going on. Now, this is one of the most common pain points that you'll see as a Rails developer getting started is as you gain traction with your little applications, uh, you'll notice that you start to see tons of queries in your uh, server logs that are all firing off for what seems to be the same exact thing. And uh, these queries start to add up, especially if you have hundreds and hundreds or thousands of comments in this case, um, these can add up. And this particular issue is called an N plus one query. N plus one meaning we have one query at the top where we're fetching a list of comments. And then we have N queries that are happening for each one of those comments. So in our case, the one is really kind of like the blog post. And then the many is every for every single comment on the blog post, we're firing off another query. Sometimes this can get really bad if you have um, each of your partials are firing off several queries and you're not loading all the data. And so the reason this is happening is if we look at our, com our at our comment partial, um, and I kind of did this intentionally, but if we look at our comment partial here, this method where we're rendering out the comment, we're calling comment.user.email. And so when we say comment.user, that is uh, accessing an association and if this comments user is not already loaded, then this is going to fire a database query to retrieve that user object. And when it retrieves that user object, then it will know its email address. So like by default, when we load all the comments, that does not know the email address for the user because the email address is in a different table than the comment content, right? So in the comment table, we have the ID for the user but we don't have any of the other information about the user. We don't have the email address, the password digest, or the name or any of that. And so when we go to render our list of comments, what we wanna do is we wanna print out the email address. And so the way around this with Rails is by doing what's called eager loading or using includes to, uh, to, uh, to proactively preload a bunch of data into memory before the view is rendered so that there are not a bunch of subsequent um, requests that are fired. So Rails can be smart when you're here, when you're actually calling this top level um, request to fetch all the comments. We're also going to fetch all of the users that are related to those comments. So here we can say dot includes and pass in user. By just adding this one tiny bit, we are improving the performance immensely. So let's add that in. We'll go back to our view and we'll refresh this page again. And now if we go back to the terminal, so this was the this was the old request where we can see all of this like select users from user or select star from users where user ID is. And then the ID is always sort of four until down here when it was nine. So this was like the first five comments were for user four. And then the last two were for user nine, right? So, um, this is the N for our N plus one query. Now, if we go down here, we only see two that fired off. Um, one was for current user, and then one was for our uh, for our association. So here you can actually see, in uh, instead of saying select star from users where user ID equals, above we had equals, here it was saying equals nine equals, you know, nine or four. Down here, now we have an in statement, an in SQL statement, where we're gonna pass an array of IDs. So for each of the comments, it's gonna go through all the comments, figure out which user IDs we need to look up, pass those as an array for a one-time query to the users table. It'll like preload all that data in memory so that we can then very quickly render out a bunch of comment partials. So now if we come back here, um, this view is now rendering really quickly. Let's do one other performance improvement, and that is that when this page is loading, we can actually see quite a few of these select star from users for this like current user method. So here we can see this is like the query that's firing for application controller line 12, that's current user. If we come down here, we see the same thing, application controller current user. Now these are like, they're hitting a cache, so it's loading insanely quickly, but we want to like actually never hit the database more than once here. So what we can do is go back to our application controller and go to line 12. 
Now, what we were doing before is we were just saying user.find session user ID. So we're looking up the user by the cookie, right? Um, but every time we use this current user method, which is several times throughout the request, we are going to be firing a database query, right? So we're firing that here, ensure current user. So this is, this is happening before you load the post page because you have to be logged in. Now, then if we go to the application HTML ERB template, here we're checking if there's a current user and if there is, then say hi and call current user.email. Yeah, we're gonna give them the logout button, otherwise we're not gonna show anything. So uh, we're calling this current user method in a few places. We can improve the performance of this using a tool called memoization. So memoization basically just means like, let's cache the variable here locally so that if we receive the current user method once, the very first time we actually fire the database query and store it in a variable. But if we receive that method again, instead of going to the database, we're just going to return the variable that we already have. So let's look at what that looks like. So here what we can do is we can say at current user is equal to user.find whatever, whatever, right? And then at the beginning of this method, what we could do is say like, if there's a current user, then return at current user, right? So at the very beginning, the very first time we call current user, this instance variable is not going to be defined, so this will return nil. And so then we should continue on down here and we'll set the current user using user.find. And then that'll fire the database query the first time. And then the second time this is called, current user will be populated because we stored it from the last database call. So current user will be populated. And then we're going to return that and we won't finish the, the rest of this method here. So we're going to execute um, just that return statement, returning the, the, the data that we got the very first time. There's actually like a, a much better shortcut here that we can use. And that is to say, uh, current user or equals uh, user.find. So this is going to say like, if there's a session ID, so if we've cookied the user, then return either some value that exists in the current user instance variable so if we have something in current user, then return that. Otherwise, we're going to, uh, so the or statement is gonna run and say like, uh, if the first value was falsy, so if the first value was nil, then we're gonna execute the right-hand side of the or statement. In this case, it has an equal sign, so it's gonna execute the database query, store whatever the result of that is back into this instance variable, and then the next time this is called, we're gonna return that instance variable again. So this is like, when, when you see this or equals thing, you can recall that this is like memoization. Another way to think about it is like remembering something or um, memorizing, but it's memoizing. I don't know, it's weird that it doesn't have an R um, in the word, but memoizing. So if we um, again refresh our page here, now when we come down to the request, we see just a handful of database queries that are firing. We have one that's firing for when we call current user method inside of application controller. Then we have another that's called uh, for fetching all of the users that are related to the comments on a specific post. So we're fetching current user, we're fetching a single post, we're fetching all the comments for the post, and we're fetching all the users for those comments. So now performance is greatly increased. It's surprising how much uh, or how expensive those database queries are, especially if you're using a really big database that runs on a different server or that like lives really far away or something like that. So it's important to cut down those database queries um, the same way that you wanna cut down like the number of a like uh, API calls or requests that are happening over the network. Um, okay, so now we have a commenting system on our blog that is pretty quick. It's, we've got our, our posts or our comments that are in reverse chronological order. We can see the title and description of our comment at the top. In the next episode, what I wanna do is go through how you would reply to some comments. So um, thanks for sticking around and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.